Hello, thank you for joining me today. Linda Lamp here. We've been reading through A Course in Miracles, the main text, and today we're going to read chapter 25, The Justice of God, section six, The State of Sinlessness. And we may also read section seven, The Special Function. Chapter 25, The Justice of God, The State of Sinlessness. The state of sinlessness is merely this. The whole desire to attack is gone, and so there is no reason to perceive the Son of God as other than he is. The need for guilt is gone because it has no purpose, and it's meaningless without a goal of sin. Attack and sin are bound as one illusion each the cause and aim and justifier of the other. Each is meaningless alone, but seems to draw a meaning from the other. Each depends upon the other for whatever sense it seems to have. And no one could believe in one unless the other were the truth, for each attests the other must be true. Attack makes Christ your enemy and God along with him. Must you not be afraid with enemies like these? And must you not be fearful of yourself? For you have hurt yourself and made yourself your enemy. And now you must believe you are not you, but something alien to yourself and something else, a something to be feared instead of loved. Who would attack whatever he perceives as wholly innocent? And who because he wishes to attack, can fail to think he must be guilty to maintain the wish while wanting innocence. For who could see the Son of God as innocent and wish him dead? Christ stands before you each time you look upon your brother. He has not gone because your eyes are closed, but what is there to see by searching for your Savior, seeing him through sightless eyes? It is not Christ you see by looking thus. It is the enemy confused with Christ you look upon and hate because there is no sin in him for you to see. Nor do you hear his plaintive call unchanged in context in whatever form the call is made that you unite with him and join with him in innocence and peace. And yet beneath the ego's senseless shrieks such is the call that God has given him, that you might hear in him his call to you and answer by, by returning unto God what is his own. The Son of God asks only this of you, that you return to him what is his due, that you may share it with him. Alone does, not, does neither have it. Alone does neither have it so must it remain useless to both. Together it will give each an equal strength to save the other and save himself along with him. Forgiven by you, your savior offers you salvation. Condemned by you, he offers death to you. In everyone you see, but the reflection of you choose to have him be with you. If you decide upon his proper function, the only one he has in truth, you are depriving him all of the joy he would have found if he fulfilled the role God gave him. But think not heaven is lost to him alone, nor can it be gained unless the way is shown to him through you that you may find it walking by his side. It is no sacrifice that he be saved, for by his freedom will you gain your own. To let his function be fulfilled is but the means to let yours be. And so you walk toward heaven or toward hell, but not alone. How beautiful his sinlessness will be when you perceive it. And how great will be your joy. When you see he is free to offer you the gift of sight God gave him for you. 
He has no need but this, that you allow him freedom to complete the task God gave to him. Remembering but this, that what he does, you do along with him. And as you see him, so do you define the function he will have for you until you see him differently and let him be what God appointed he be to you. Against the hatred the son of God may cherish toward himself is God believed to be without the power to save what he created from the pain of hell. But in the love he shows himself is God made free to let him be, to let his will be done. In your brother, you see the picture of your own belief in what the will of God must be for you. In your forgiveness, will you understand his love for you through your attack? Believe he hates you, thinking heaven must be hell. Look once again upon your brother, not without the understanding that he is the way to heaven or to hell as you perceive him. But forget not this, the role you give him is given you and you will walk the way you pointed out to him because it is your judgment on yourself. We'll go on to the special function. The special function, section seven, the grace of God rests gently on forgiving eyes and everything they look on speaks of him to the beholder. He can see no evil, nothing in the world to fear and no one who is different from himself. And as he loves them, so he looks upon himself with love and gentleness. He would no more condemn himself for his mistakes than damn another. He is not an arbiter of vengeance or a punisher of sin. The kindness of his sight rests on him, self with all the tenderness it offers others. For he would only heal and only bless. And being in accord with what God wills, he has the power to heal and bless all those he looks on with grace of God upon his sight. Eyes become used to darkness and the light of brilliant day seems painful to eyes grown long accustomed to the dim effects perceived at twilight. And they turn away from sunlight and the clarity it brings to what they look upon. Dimness seems better, easier to see and better recognized. Somehow the vague and more obscure seems easier to look upon, less painful to the eyes than what is wholly clear and unambiguous. Yet this is not what eyes are for, and who can say that he prefers the darkness and maintains he wants to see. To wish to see calls down the grace of God upon your eyes and brings the gift of light that makes sight possible. Would you behold your brother? God is glad to have you look upon him. He does not will your savior be unrecognized by you, nor does he will that he remain without function that he gave to him. Let him no more be lonely, for the lonely ones are those who see no function in the world for them to fill, no place where they are needed, no aim which only they perfectly fulfill. Such is the Holy Spirit's kind perception of specialness, his use of what you made to heal instead of harm. To each he gives a special function in salvation he alone can fill, apart for only him. Nor is the plan complete until he finds his special function and fulfills that part assigned to him to make him complete within a world where incompletion rules. Here, where the laws of God do not prevail in perfect form, can he yet do one perfect thing and make one perfect choice? And by this act of special faithfulness to one perceived as other than himself, he learns the gifts as given him, and so they must be one. Forgiveness is the only function meaningful in time. 
It is the means the Holy Spirit uses to translate specialness from sin into salvation. Forgiveness is for all, but when it rests on all, it is complete and every function of this world completed with it. Then is time no more. Yet while in time, there is still much to do and each must do what is allotted him for on his part does all the plan depend. He has a special part in the time for so he chose and choosing it, he made it for himself. His wish was not denied, but changed in form to let it serve as his brother and himself and thus become, become a means to save in, instead of lose. Salvation is no more than a reminder. This world is not your home. Its laws are not imposed on you. Its values are not yours. And nothing that you think you see is really there at all. This is seen and understood as each one takes his part in its undoing as he did in making it. He has the means for either, as he always did. The specialness he chose to hurt himself did God appoint to the means for his salvation and from the very instant that the choice was made. His special sin has made his special grace. His special hate became his special love. The Holy Spirit needs your special function uh, that his may be fulfilled. Think not that you lack a special value here. You wanted it and it was given to you. All that you made can serve salvation easily and well. The Son of God can make no choice the Holy Spirit cannot employ on his behalf and not against himself. Only in darkness does your specialness appear to be attack. In light, you see it as your special function in the plan to save the Son of God from all attack and to let him understand that he is safe as he has always been and will remain in time and in eternity alike. This is the function given you for your brother. Take it gently then from your brother's hand and let salvation be perfectly fulfilled in you. Do this one thing, that everything be given you. So again, it's a lot of words to basically say that everything that you're experiencing is your choice in how you experience it. How you choose to look at things is how you will experience things. So the special function, the grace of God rests gently on forgiving eyes and everything they look on speaks of him to the beholder. He can see no evil, nothing in the world to fear and no one is different from himself. And as he loves them, so he looks upon himself with love and gentleness. He would no more condemn himself for his mistakes than damn another. This is really the key. This is really the key to understanding what this teaching is. You are divinity. Everything is divinity. There isn't anything out there. And so by choosing to be love and be loving is the path forward. In the light, you see it as your special function in the plan to save the Son of God from all attack and let him understand that he is safe as he has always been and will remain in time 
and in eternity alike. This is the function given you for your brother. Take it gently then from your brother's hand and let salvation be perfectly fulfilled in you. Do this one thing that everything be given you. So that will conclude the reading for today. If you'd like additional support, you can reach out to me at 907-351-3003, or you can visit me on the web or at uh, lindalamp.shop, lindalamp.com, and through the Facebook page uh, or group Love by Light. If you're not a member, feel free to uh, join. Thank you again. Until the next reading, namaste and much love.